Hello there. Welcome back for another case of the week. Our patient today is a 32-year-old female whose chief complaint is severe thermal sensitivity in the upper right quadrant. She presents with a large cavitated carious lesion on the distal side of number three. Radiographic examination also reveals a high possibility of pulpal involvement. Our goal here is to preserve as much healthy tooth structure as possible by circumscribing the decayed area of the tooth. We begin the caries cleanup process by expanding the cavity along the buccal, lingual, gingival, and axial prep walls. Here I'm using a round-ended tapered diamond burr to extend the prep walls until I reach healthy, sound tooth structure along the DEJ. Caries indicator is a useful aid in determining whether or not to extend the preparation as it stains demineralized areas of the tooth. I will apply the caries indicator dye and remove tooth structure until the DEJ no longer stains. Once the infected dentin is exposed, I use a slow speed round burr to carefully remove the soft tooth structure, beginning at the outermost areas near the DEJ. Deep caries removal reveals a pinpoint exposure with fortunately no hemorrhaging. A direct pulp cap with a GI liner is applied to help maintain the vitality of the tooth. At this point, once all the infected tissue is removed, we as dentists must face the decision of whether to restore this tooth using a direct or indirect method. Ultimately, we must provide the patient with the best service possible using the, the technology and materials we are comfortable with. I elect to restore this case with an indirect ceramic onlay that can be fabricated chair-side. Since it will be an indirect restoration, I modify the preparation so the internal walls are divergent, eliminating any undercuts. Since we will take a digital impression, ideally we want at least half a millimeter of separation between the margins of our prep and the adjacent tooth, number two. We want to remove any unsupported enamel along the margins that could compromise the seal of our restoration. Gingival retraction is also very important when taking impressions, either conventionally or digitally, so I place a size triple zero cord first to help displace the tissues apically. In areas that are really difficult to access, I sometimes use a probe to help with the placement to ensure the cord is fully seated within the sulcus, away from the margins of the tooth. I then place a size 2 core to help displace the tissue laterally away from the margins. After about 5 minutes, we remove the top cord and spray the contrast agent for the 3M True Definition Scanner on the teeth in the upper right quadrant. The scanner acquires the data very quickly as I move along the occlusal to lay the initial foundation of our digital model and then begin to rotate the camera towards the buckle and lingual to ensure we have all the surfaces digitally impressed. After the maxillary scans of our preparation site are complete, I apply contrast agent to the lower right quadrant. For the opposing set of scans, I follow a similar scan pattern as the preparation scans to ensure I've included all the surfaces. The third set of scans are quite easy. Uh, they're taken with the patient biting down fully in centric to properly align the maxillary and mandibular scans. Once all of the three scans are completed, our super RDA Will Schmidt assists with the completion of the digital prescription. He selects the prep site, what type of restoration, and where we want this digital impression uh, to be sent to. For this case, we are directing it to our in-house lab computer that contains our fast design software where we're going to design it right here in the operatory and send the file to our TS-150 chairside mill. Once it transfers, I open the file and begin the design process. I first indicate to the software the occlusal path of insertion direction and next is the placement of the margin. As long as proper tissue management is performed, this part is completed very quickly, as the software has an automatic detection where it will seek out the edge of the margin. After the initial placement, we have the option to modify the margins by dragging the line to a more desired position. It's important to check the margin from different views to ensure it is positioned properly. 
On the next page, we indicate to the software the buckle direction so the built-in library can create the proper alignment for the initial proposal. The software does a great job of filling in the missing areas by restoring the preparation to proper contours. We have the freedom to make modifications to the design using a multitude of tools at our disposal. Here I'm making a slight modification to the distal lingual groove area and also the marginal ridge position using the freeform tool. Once the occlusion and proximal contacts and the overall design are completed, I advance to the final page. I have the ability to direct the sprue position at this point towards the, in this case, the distal lingual area away from the contact area. It just helps with the removal of the sprue once the restoration is milled out. For this case, we are using an Obsidian CAD A1 block in our TS150 mill. An excellent way to utilize our time while the restoration is milling is to complete any other direct restorations the patient may need. In this instance, our patient has a class one lesion on the occlusal of number 18. So we will go ahead and take care of that while the restoration is in the milling unit. After the complete removal of the decay on number 18, that's verified with Carrie's indicator die, uh, we go on with our standard bonding sequence as with any other direct restoration. After about 10 minutes, the TS-150 has completed the milling cycle for our onlay, and I am now using a slow speed lab handpiece to remove the sprue on the distal lingual portion of the restoration. It's extremely important to do this while your hands are stabilized to avoid inadvertently hitting the margins. The burr I'm using is actually the same burr that was used in the TS-150 unit to mill out these restorations. It seats perfectly into a straight lab handpiece. For obsidian CAD, which is a lithium silicate material, it must undergo a crystallization cycle to transform the material to its final high strength state of 385 megapascals of flexural strength. For the restoration, I stabilize it with super peg material, which is a high heat resistant refractory paste. It helps to eliminate firing distortion and also any contamination. Once the paste is placed on the intaglio surface of the onlay, I seat it on a firing tray that's then placed into our whip mix porcelain oven. To expedite the process, it's really not necessary to stain and glaze the restoration. After the 20 minute crystallization cycle, I choose to polish the onlay with Diashine diamond polishing paste and a soft bristle Robinson brush. It doesn't take much time until a high luster is achieved on the ceramic surface. Now that the onlay is completed, we try it in with the aid of the Ivoclar Optra Stick, which I highly recommend when seeding these small partial coverage restorations. To cement this onlay, I use 3M's Reliax Unisem, which is a self-adhesive resin cement. Even though it's not required, I selectively etched the enamel margins with 37% phosphoric acid and also apply an additional bonding agent to the entire preparation. Obsidian CAD ceramic must also be pre-treated with hydrofluoric acid in a 5% concentration for 10 seconds and then primed with silane. Once that's done, the resin cement can either be applied to the restoration or directly into the preparation cavity. The cement can be removed immediately with a microbrush after the restoration is placed while it's still in a low viscous state, or after a two second tack cure to accelerate it into a gel state. Don't wait too long, however, otherwise you may end up having to mill the cement off of the tooth. Using slow speed rubber polishing wheels, I smooth any surface roughness along the margins to ensure a smooth transition between the onlay and the tooth. Here I use a Aklu brush to provide some additional polish to the restoration once all the excess cement is removed. With only a polished finish, the Obsidian CAD Chersite material blends in really well with the patient's natural dentition. It's an amazing time in dentistry where we can provide high quality ceramic restorations for our patients within a single appointment while offering a tremendous convenience for them and also creating the opportunity for us as dentists to be more efficient. Thank you so much for tuning in for this week's Case of the Week 
and we look forward to seeing you back for the next one.